I believe most of the interest to date has been trying to figure out which way our, our mail went. And that's what the class is about today. It's, it's, we're going to do some sleuthing and uh, it's travel way forensics. Old business. Who has seen, the, remember last week, who has looked for the pink cliffs on the side of Pine Valley Mountain? Has anyone? Okay. Did you find them? I did find them. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, then let's, let's go back and have a test from last week. What, what are the six rock layers I suggested you look for? Can you remember any of them? Navajo, Kayanta. Chocolate cliffs are the Shinarump. Yeah, Shinarump. And Kaibab, Kaibab limestone. So again, it's, it's a takeoff on the grand staircase, which is pink, white, vermilion, and, uh, and brown, which are the Shinarump. So those, again, are what I recommend. You know, I think we can see easily when we travel throughout the Colorado Plateau. So that's, that's why I've I kind of tried to point those out. Bruce, there is one thing that it's a contradiction to the older layers, the younger layers on top and the older. Well, it's deformation. Is, and that is, it's deformation, but also the, the volcanic flow. Those flows went down through valleys. It's, it's the opposite, there are right. Older rocks at lower elevations. At lower elevations. Right. So they're, they're the valley fills. So, yeah. Yeah, but, but within the sedimentary rocks, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's fairly, fairly accurate. Okay, how many have been worried about the way I spell travel way? Spell checkers will, will show it's wrong, but, but several highway departments do spell it as one word. So <laughs> don't worry about the spelling. Today's agenda includes Armeo's map alignment, efforts to find historical travel ways, and we're gonna do forensics at the crossings. The Colorado River, the Coxcomb, the Hurricane Cliffs, and the Beaver Dam Mountains. And following each of these slide presentations, I'll open it up for discussion because we have a couple of experts here who might be able to contribute something. And we're also gonna vote. This is a democracy. So let's, let's vote as to which way our meal went between St. George and Mesquite. And then to finish up the class, we're, uh, Diana Hawks is gonna talk about archeological investigations and sensitivity. Armillo's travel way, it's theoretical. It's a location that is interpreted. What's the probability of, of finding a trail created by 60 men with 100 mules after 180 years? I think it's fairly low. Spanish trail location maps are primarily published in federal reports. For hiking, its location would need to be included on a 1 to 24,000 scale map, topo map. I've only seen one map at this scale that's identified the Spanish Trail, and that's a road location in Santa Fe. What's the primary rule, environmental rule for hiking? Stay on the trail. And that's pretty difficult if you don't have a trail. There is a digital alignment that can be overlaid on com computer maps, which is to, intended to be used for research, not navigation. And that's what I've overlaid on, on most of the maps today. And the source is the federal government. That's the historical trail. The existing map location is suitable for the intended purpose. So this, this digital map location produced by the federal government is suitable for its intended purpose and its intended purpose is not navigation. 
Its intended purpose is to become a legislated national historic trail, and there needs to be a line on the map for this to happen. The map location is also intended to be revised. Historical sites and segments can be identified for development using this location. Which way did our meal go? It's a forensic exercise that covers about 950 miles. We have several things we can consider. We can consider his journal. We can consider the landscape topography. We can consider travel ways on historical maps. We can consider that generally he could travel 10 to 20 miles a day. And we can consider archaeological artifacts, which Diana will talk about. His journal had many entries, but only five, less than five can we find on today's maps. Travel ways are along drainages, and, and I think we can identify probably less than 10 drainages that we can see on today's maps. And there are 30, at least 35 descriptions of the landscape. And Red Ridge is, is kind of generic, so you have to get within the vicinity and then do a lot of imagination or interpretation. Many travelways passed through Spanish Canyon in California, but only one of these can be Armillo's. Black is the legislated trail, dashed red is the revised federal alignment. Other colors have been found on old maps as indicating travelways. Many travelers can go in the same general direction. So this is what was in the original legislation for Armillo. This dashed right here was the, is the revised for the administration plan. And all these others are, are travel ways by other people through this general location. In 2009, the BLM and the Old Spanish Trail Association entered a cooperative agreement to develop a trail steward manual. Stewards find, inventory, monitor, and protect the Spanish Trail. Some of the guidelines in this manual for locating historic trails include follow ridge lines and avoid ravines and gullies, avoid rocky terrain and deep sand. And again, this is for all historic trails, not specific to our meals. Spread out in alkali areas. Trail artifacts, look for trail artifacts at concentrated, difficult traveling points. Rocks may be moved out of the way. Inscriptions may be left. There may be some effect on vegetation patterns. And look for rust marks on stones, trail blazes, and rub marks. The Spanish Trail Association has used field trips to look for Armillo's journal sites. This field trip tried to find the journal entry Limestone Canyon with water holes. That's the description. And you'll probably recognize Diana in this photograph when she speaks. The BLM has had cooperative agreements with the Spanish Trail Association to investigate journal locations. This particular agreement involved four trail segments. And the Grand, uh, Grand Staircase, Arizona Strip, from Moccasin Springs or the, or the uh, National Monument Springs to Hurricane Cliffs, St. George District to Beaver Dam Wash, this is an area we'll be looking at, and the Virgin River area. Armillo traveled with mules. Some criteria used for evaluating mule travel ways was provided by Mark Henderson. Mark is a retired archaeologist who 
has a continued interest in the Old Spanish Trail. These photos, they weren't given by Mark, but they show someone's idea as, as to what a mule travel way or, or trace from a mule pack train could look like. Our mules travel way on federal maps. Location was determined piecemeal from many different sources. I think primarily from the Spanish Trail Association. There is no systematic documentation to explain the map alignment or relate to journal entries. So if you go and ask the National Park Service, how did you justify this alignment? Uh, there, there's nothing that's published that's, that can simply describe their rationale. Supporting evidence for some of the map locations is not available to the public because it's bundled with archaeological sensitive data. And Diana, you might discuss the sensitivity of archaeological artifacts. Okay, let's, let's deal with the travelway barriers. It's the Colorado River. The coxcomb, what's the coxcomb? It's, it's kind of a mountain ridge. Hurricane cliffs, that's, that's obvious. They're 15 to 2,000 feet high. And the Beaver Dam Mountains. Again, it's always a challenge to cross the mountains. Armillo's journal is the basis for finding his travel way. There is only one location in hundreds of miles that the Colorado River can be crossed on foot. Escalante used it in 1776. He also notched the sandstone cliffs near the crossing and has a journal that described in detail how he got there. The crossing location has been identified on some topo maps. So again, this is from, the, from Armillo's journal. And this is a location that we can find on some maps, Crossing of the Fathers. It's under water now. It is. It is. Okay, Steve Heath published this list in a journal. This crossing was well known to both the Navajos and the Paiutes. It's a control point for east-west travelways. Okay, if, if you're crossing a river, what would you rather see? Still water or ripples? Ripple. Why? Shallow. Shallow water. So that, that's, that's in a guide when you're crossing a river. Look for ripples because you've got shallow water. Deep water means you're going to probably have to swim. This is a 1 to 63,500 map scale. And what's the significance of the scale? It means that one inch equals one mile. This map shows the contours before Lake Powell was filled. I've added dots that are spaced one mile apart along Armillo's National Historic Trail alignment. The arrows show three possible journal locations. Crossing of the Fathers is well defined by Escalante's journal and steps carved in the rock that could be seen prior to the filling of the Glen Canyon Dam. Blanco Canyon is interpreted to be along the Waweep Creek and the journal campsite can be seen anywhere along this blue line. So we've got a journal entry, Blanco Canyon, it's interpreted to be Wallweep, and Wallweep goes along this, this area right here. Where would Escalante be on that map? F north. north, yeah, way, way to the north. Well, no, when he, when he oh, oh, as Escalante. Yeah, the oh. city, town. Oh, the town is way north. Way north. It, the town is way north. Well, this is closer like to the page. That, that looks like it parallels US 89, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. The Indian camp is interpreted to be at the Perea River. 
The arrows are spaced about 20 miles apart, which is a reasonable travel distance in one day. Oh, I'm sorry. Your little dots don't have any crossing if you're crossing in the father's so side. Why is that? Uh, let's back up. Because I haven't, they, no, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. So <laughs> here's crossing of the fathers on, on this topo map. And this is the alignment right here. So remember, the trail alignment is approximately correct, but precisely wrong. And so I'm not, I'm not sure exactly the specific reason for this change. But as we'll see in a minute, it doesn't make any difference. It's underwater. So. OK, this old atlas map shows a travel way that could have been our meals. It's, it's dated 1891. I've, I've added some interpreted uh, locations for the journal. So the white arrows are mine, but, but uh, this Travel way could be found on a 1891 atlas map. Okay, now we'll get to the specifics as to where the crossing of the fathers was. This enlargement of the previous topo map shows the federal travel way alignment is approximate and not precisely correct. It does not align with the crossing of the fathers on the topo map. I added a dot at the coordinates identified as crossing by the Board of Geographic Names, and this location agrees with the name on this particular map. The arrow shows the sandbar crossing described by Escalante. Escalante followed Padre Creek down to access the river and carved stops, steps near the bottom for traction. Armillo reportedly repaired the step, so he probably followed Padre Creek up for some distance. And if you remember from borders in, in, in previous sessions, the center of the Colorado River here is a boundary for the Navajo Reservation, and it's also the boundary between Kane and San Juan counties. So Here's the crossing of the father's coordinate, which was defined by the Board of Geographic Names. This crossing on the father's label, I didn't add. That was on this particular map, which is, which is early 50s. And from the topo map, we can see how we have a sandbar here. We have a sandbar over here. And this probably is the crossing of the father's along this arrow here. Escalante's journal shows he came down Padre Creek. He didn't call it Padre Creek, but he came down this way to gain access to the Colorado River. This is the historic trail alignment right here. And again, it's, it's in the area and it's suitable for its intended purpose. So Bruce, when, when you say historic alignment, do you mean the legislated route? As, as revised, this wasn't, this wasn't revised, but this was in the original legislated route. Okay. And they didn't revise it for the complement CAS. Okay. What happened with the legislated route is um, before Congress designated it as a National Historic Trail, they went to all the BLM and Forest Service and Park Service offices and said, where is the old Spanish trail? And so they got information from all of those offices and combined it onto a map. And it was just the best available information. And because Congress wants to do the right thing. They want to do it as, as good as they can. And so that results from information they received probably from the Park Service and maybe the BLM. And we haven't tied down the exact route, like Bruce has said, of where it was. But somebody missed the boat because we did know they crossed the crossing of the fathers. So somebody, I don't know how that happened, but Congress got from the agencies that red line. Well, uh, that, that can be uh, explained by scale of map. Uh -huh. it, it was laid out on a 1 to 100,000 scale, and I've overlaid this on a 1 to 24,000 scale. So it probably got, it got a lot closer on the 1 to 100,000 scale. But again, it, 
this is suitable for the intended purpose and the intended purpose is, is one of the intended purposes is to refine its location. And, and as, and as uh, Diana said, it was done piecemeal and they had to have something on a map to, for the legislation. Bruce, do you know the name of that canyon south of Condre Canyon, this is canyon? No, I'm, I'm sorry I don't. I'm not sure if that's Gunsight. I, I don't know. It, 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 it could be Gunsight Canyon. Because it's, it's right, right, yeah, adjacent to Gunsight Butte. And there's another inscription up there, too, from 1776. Right, and we'll see that in a minute, I, th I think, if that's the one you're thinking of. But, but again, rivers are borders. The center line of the Colorado is the, board, the Navajo Reservation stops, is on this side of the river, right here. And this is also the dividing line between Kane and San Juan counties. The, today, the crossing of the Fathers is covered by Lake Powell, and its exact location of the travelway is a moot point because we can't get there anyway. But again, this is the, the crossing, and this is the alignment. But it's all covered with water. Escalante entered in his journal a latitude of 36 degrees, 55 minutes for the crossing area. He estimated the latitude using the North Star, and this latitude is about eight miles off. So right here is the correct latitude. If, if, if you project the latitude on this map on Google Earth of 36.55, it would be this location. And this is respectable. For those days to be within eight miles, that's, that's pretty good. And this, this was just calculated using Google Earth, but, but from, from this latitude to the exact location is about eight miles off in Escalante's journal. Sketches were used like photographs during historical explorations. This sketch is of the crossing area during Wheeler's 1870 survey. I look at the buttes that I've uh, got arrows pointing to. Do you see them again? And this is a 1950s photo of the crossing area. And the blue area, you, can't, you can see a sandbar here, but you can't see a sandbar on the other side. This is probably where they could walk across is this area right here. Is this, is this what you were thinking of? Yeah. Okay. According to the March 11th, 2016th Deseret News, this graffiti was found in a reservoir side canyon. The top half is a computer enhancement of the bottom half. Its interpretation is passed through here, the year 1776. And a steel cage was erected to protect this particular inscription. So this is without computer enhancement. This is with, and this again shows maybe why there needs to be some protection of artifacts or inscriptions, all the graffiti. There is one interesting thing about Dominguez and Escalante that day when they crossed. There was a severe storm, and they were looking for a place to get out of the weather. And there actually is a very nice overhang a few hundred feet from this site. And it, for me, that's where they stayed that night when it rained so hard and the weather was bad. Okay. So there is a good reason they went a little bit out of the way, so to speak, uh, up a, quote, side came, and they were looking for a place to. And this, and then uh, probably the next day, he went out and inscribed that in the canyon wall. Okay, and this, this is from his journal, right? Yes. Yeah, it's from, and Escalante had a very 
detailed journal, journal and he also had a cartographer or an artist, my era, who created a map after they got back. So there's a lot more detail about Escalante's travel way than there is Armillo's. Has anyone used diving gear to see this plaque? <laughs> Fortunately, we don't need to. It's in Page, Arizona, in front of the Wesley Powell Museum. So we can all see this, this particular plaque for the crossing. What makes this location suitable for a crossing? Colorado River is accessible from both sides. It's located between canyons. Upstream is Glen Canyon, downstream is Marble Canyon, and then the Grand Canyon. So relative to canyons, you have better access to the river at this location than at many others. Escalante tried to swim across this location, but he couldn't. So this was his first try to get across the Colorado River. I think most of us are familiar with Lee's Ferry. Have we all been there or, or heard of it? So Escalante actually tried to cross this location first. We don't see any ripples, and, and so he had to swim, and, and he just he couldn't make it. Two weeks later, he got to the crossing of the fathers, so he had to backtrack. And just for geographic reference, this is the Prairie River outwash, outlet right here, which drains into the Colorado. We can see the Navajo Bridge, 89A, that's right here. Okay, now that we've crossed the Colorado, let's, let's, let's try the coxcomb. We have three journal entries to guide us, and they're all landscape descriptions. Rimrock, eyebrow, red. Also, there's a settlement, to look at the spelling for Paiutes. So this is the information we have for the for location of this journal entry, Creek of the Ridge Canyon. That's another journal entry, another location. Top of forested mountain, no water. That's, that's pretty general. So again, you have to get within the general vicinity to try and interpret specific point locations. Oh, wait, yeah, any more comments on the Colorado River? I forgot to, any, any discussion? <laughs> I forgot the format, yeah. What documentation is there that he went along US 89 No, it's 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 uh, it's a travel way between Blanco, Walweep Canyon, and what we what we think is the, the well at, then the Prairie River, which we think probably the Paiutes had a settlement. Uh, 89 or 89A? That, that's 89. It's just north of the actual highway. Yeah, that's between Page Page and Kanab. Uh, 89A is, is the Navajo Bridge. Actually, for further um, information, we do know that our people crossed at Crossing the Fathers. We do know that point. And so we're, the conjecture is that he did go west up through Blanco Canyon, which is White Canyon today, just north of Highway 89. We're not sure exactly where, <laughs> but we do know that was generally location. <clears throat> and then the next <clears throat> ridge that you get to is the coxcomb. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a physical barrier until you reach here. So on the flats he could go anywhere but but mm -hmm. this is kind of a kind of a straight line 89A or 89 I'm sorry 89. But 89 built across the sand. The, the wash just north of it is a Blanco Canyon. It's as wide as can be. I've walked it, I know. It looks just exactly like you described. Can you guess how Coxcomb got its name? <laughs> it's a mono, in geology, it's a monocline, but it only has one fold slope. The, Cox, uh, the comb is, is actually the Entrana 
sandstone formation. We haven't mentioned that before. But this comb right here is the Entrada sandstone. The barrier is the Navajo sandstone. We remember that one here. All the softer material right here in between has been eroded out. And that's what we see on top of the Navajo sandstone in Zion National Park. So the formations right here that compose the West Temple and East Temple, that's the Clarion Formation and the Temple Cap Formations, they've all been removed. And again, like the Beaver Dam Mountains, this being folded, it is kind of the stratigraphic section laid on its side. So the Entrada sandstone is younger than these materials that have been removed. And, it's, and next, next in age would be the Nevada, uh, Navajo sandstone right here. And this kind of, kind of answers your question right here is, we know that he went somewhere along Blanco Canyon and there's the Perea River, which makes sense that that, that would be the, a settlement for the Paiute Indians. And this is the alignment here. I, I've, I've added the, the dots, which are about one mile apart. So it's just an interpretation from here to here, but it's kind of a straight line and it, it tends to coincide with Highway 89. And the blue areas are, are spring areas. Today, in today's database anyway, spring locations. And if the Perea River was dry, there still are some spring locations. So it's, it's logical that this would be a good location. You, you've got a line that go down that corner, down just a little, down, 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 no, over that, right there. See that line? That's probably the road over to those houses when you come up on the main <coughs> If you're driving there, you'll see houses over there. They came up right out of that canyon where those houses are built. It's the first houses you see on Highway 89 going to Page. Uh -huh. Well, other than the ones down by the river. That's all there. Okay, now we've gotten from Blanco Canyon to settlement of the Paiutes. And this is the settlement of the, again, I think it's in this general area, it, it's, it's a good possibility, was a journal entry. But we've got a description, rim rock, eyebrow, red. And here's a wild, literal interpretation. This is a Vandery interpretation. <laughs> a lot of times uh, people only refer to the coxcomb trying to interpret this interpretation to, yeah, as a description for this interpretation. But here we have a rim rock, here we have an eyebrow, and it's red. The rim rock here is actually limestone, so it's more grayish. It's not the kaibab, but it's limestone. But this is a literal interpretation. You can have an eyebrow here that's red. The coxcomb is actually white, because it's Navajo sandstone. It's bleached Navajo sandstone. So anyway, there's, this is what you can do with your imagination, trying, trying to interpret the journal sites. Okay, now we've got three possible journal sites for crossing the Coxcomb. We also have Cat Stair Canyon, which may have been an alternative route. So we've got the settlement, and we've got a logical travel way, which is the Perea River. And there is a breach in the Perea River right here. And that probably is his creek of the Ridge Canyon. And then the last journal entry was Forested Mountains. And he's finally getting into some vegetation over here. And let's take a look at Cat Stair Canyon. Well, let's, let's, in a minute, well, let's, let's <laughs> wait a minute here. Armillo probably followed the Perea River to the Creek Ridge Canyon where the Perea breaches the Coxcomb. 
And this distance right here, counting the dots, is about 11 miles, and that's a reasonable travel distance. Okay, this, again, we're looking east, so we're looking uh, through the coxcomb, and this is a creek through the coxcomb, and this is probably his, his creek of the Ridge Canyon. But we've got a couple of movie sites. Remember from last week, McKenna's Gold? That's located right about here. How many have seen the outlaw Josie Wales? Not, not many Westerns <laughs> fans here. So that's this location here. McKenna's Gold, uh, one of the scenes was probably here. This is the, a way through the coxcomb following this Perea River and we're looking to the east. Again, this was taken from the movie and they painted the cliff for the gold, but this is the Navajo sandstone. That's outlaw Josie Wales. This, this was a reconstructed movie set right here. It's been burned down several times. But what's this formation here? That's the petrified forest. That's the blue clay that we see here in St. George. Who has driven to the Perea movie site? Okay. And here's the pullout. Here's 89A, so it's, it's come up through the coxcomb. You go past the ways. There's a pullout here with a bunch of signs, and then you can follow the road over to the Priya River. And the Priya and the Josie Wales movie site is about here. So next time you, you drive to this location, it's, it's not only a, a movie site, our meal may have been here. So keep that in mind. So is Ridge Canyon still north of there, Bruce? I'm sorry? Ridge Canyon, is that still north of the Priya movie site? Uh, I'm, which canyon? Ridge. Oh, that's, oh, oh, the ridge, yeah, that's, that's right here. You can't see it, but it, it, here's the river, and it goes, goes that way right there. Why won't you have stayed right in the Perea? I don't know. I, I mean, I you can't understand, understand anybody not. not. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that, uh, that, that, that might be a, a refinement that needs to be made. Because it would, it would. Yeah. yeah um, kind of west of Yellow Rock. I don't know if you've ever been to Yellow Rock, but it's just west of there. That would be about 10 miles north of, you know, where they thought the Paiute settlement was. Uh-huh. I don't know why you have to cut through such a narrow canyon. Well, there's oh. another reason why I think they just followed the river. Right. And it, horses. Right. And, and if you've got water and you've got to, get whatever feed you can get, and the river is the only place you would go. You're a reasonable man. And it's, you know, you're following. Yeah. It's on Indian Trail, but I don't believe so. Yeah. Well, um, actually, I was with um, the Old Spanish Trail Association when they checked this area, and where the highway goes. Should we back up? Uh, actually, that, that's it right there, wasn't it? Well, this, this is, this is, uh, Oh, okay, that, yeah, we can go back there. When you cut through the coxcomb, there's actually an old historic road you can kind of see that was there before the highway, and it comes down, and there's a, and here's a canyon that you can follow through the coxcomb. Can you see it? Yeah. So it is possible yeah. to get horses through there. Well, but I think Olsta's conclusion was, we're not sure, but we think probably they fell in the river. And, 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 and we'll add a little bit to this here. So let's... Yeah, I, we, I think that's the way the uh, 1901 survey went through. Yeah. But you're talking 1901. People have been going through that, explored a lot, and they went through that way to get over to crossing of the problem. Yeah. Okay, so Cat Stair Canyon has a hiking trail parallel and south of Highway 89 through the Coxcomb. From its name, do you think Armillo could have traveled through the canyon? Well, 
cat, what is, only a cat can get through. No, that's not true. <laughs> Have you walked it? It's, yeah, I've walked it. Oh, okay, well then, then maybe you can help us out, because I, uh, the other thing is there's a stair. Uh-huh. And, and uh, we'll, we'll look at it in a little bit detail, but uh, from its name, uh, it suggests only a cat can get through, and that there's a stair. There's some type of vertical cliff or barrier along the way. Well, not on the highway, but in the canyon itself? It crosses the highway. Um, it's hard to tell. Well, it, Does highway construction check out that portion of it? Well, no. Here's, here's, here's the trail that goes this way. Right. So actually, this is where, where probably the cliffs exist right here. No, no. What, there's, there is another route that connects to it. If you, come, if you come up, and then it actually crosses the highway and goes north, down kind of in a switchback down on the eastern side of that coast. Right, and the trouble with highways is we don't know when they were built. And this we, highway was built in the 60s. No, no, I mean, but and the other route. Oh, it, the other route. Right. Other, other route, that, yeah. that's, that probably wasn't available for Armeo to see. Well, except they could have come down that side. Yeah, but the obvious thing would be he'd be looking for canyons to, to get across the coxcomb. Yeah. And Cat Stair would, would have been a possibility. Okay, I think it's a possibility that almost every time they came to one of these choke points or places, they had a reconnaissance. And if you read this one, there's no reconnaissance. Right. Which to me says- They followed the river. They followed the river. They followed the river. That's what that says to me. Well, and if you look from the east, looking at the coxcomb, it looks like a pretty formidable barrier. (laughs) That's right. And when you get there, you say, I'm not going that way. Yeah. We'll go up the river. I think it's- you know, you can hike across it, you can do all kinds of things later on, but... That re- reconnaissance is needed, yeah. That reconnaissance is needed, and they did not do a reconnaissance on that day. Right. This, again, is, is the trail that I've kind of traced from Google Earth. This is the possible cliff location. But House, House Rock Valley Road, does anyone recognize that? Yeah. What, what's what's over, over, over here? The wave. The, and the waves. So this is the way off of 89 you would get to, to the wave, is by following this road right here. But this again is, is Google Earth. I think, this is, I think there is a ledge right here, or a vertical cliff. And I found this photograph in, uh, on the internet, I hate to admit that, <laughs> but supposedly this was taken along that trail, and there is a vertical barrier. Okay, I like movies. How, how, many, how many have seen <laughs> the 1951 movie Westward, The Women? Robert Taylor was in it, but you can't see him. I think this is in the vicinity of Cat Stair Canyon where they, when they were doing some road construction on 89. But again, this is the Navajo sandstone right here. So they're probably going down to the, to the to the east. Again, the journal entries are landscape descriptions, not names on today's maps. Limestone Canyon is believed to be above the cliffs and stinking waters below. Again, we got a description of Coyote Plains, a description of a limestone canyon, and a description of Stinking Water Canyon. And it, 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 all, it also has permanent water. Yeah, you probably should have put, instead of stopping, put reconnaissance, because that's what they did. Uh-huh. They went out to look, what, where do we go? We can't get off the cliff. Okay, the Spanish Trail Association field trip identified, is, is it the circle area? And it's a possible journal location. Blue pins are spring locations, at least current today's spring locations. And let's go review some of the geology right here. So we have the Chocolate Cliffs, we have the Shinnerump. This is, I think, Little Tree Mountain. But we have the. Lost Springs. Oh. Yeah. Lost Springs, you're right. Lost Springs, the one we find. Yeah. yeah. And we have the Shinnerump Cliffs. This is the area that 
the uh, Trail Association field trip thought was a possible journal stop. We've got Rock Canyon here just for identification purposes. This is the Kaibab limestone. You can see gray. And just one, one quick guideline. If it's gray, it probably was deposited in the ocean. If it's red, it probably was deposited on land. That's a generalization, but that's, that's kind of a good way to find limestone is most limestones are gray because they were deposited in the ocean. Again, I can't quite see some, but the springs seem to be along a contact. Remember from last week, it's a contact springs are most common in, in the Colorado Plateau and there seems to be a contact here and maybe a contact there. And there is a contact there. And again, the, you've got the contact, but you have to have a fra fracture system that leads, <laughs> leads to the contact. Okay, let, we won't, we won't. So from the coxcomb, they went, they had to go like southwest towards Canal, right, to get? Yeah, we, we've, we've skipped a lot, of, a lot of areas in between. So he's already gone through Pipe Springs. Right. That's further on back. We're just looking at the barriers because they limit, limit the possibilities of, of how, to, how to get through. And uh, I, I would just say this, out in the flats like at Kanab, you, you can follow the highway on the north side or you can be down in the valley or any other place in between. When you get those big flat areas, so to speak, everybody can go every direction. Generally wet, but you don't know exactly where the trail is. Right, you're south of Smithsonian Butte, little, yeah. little creek. Yeah. And you got to cross the perfect. Yeah, the, the places where you can figure out where they may have gone more precisely are at these construction points. Right. The, the, the the, those are the closest we can get probably with our estimates. But canyons generally are travel ways. I've got Arrows pointed to four different canyons, and which which of these canyons do you think is most logical? Look look at this right here. What do you see? You see some ledge cliffs. So keep that in mind when we'll look in a little bit more detail at these locations. But the thing at the look at right here along the Hurricane Cliffs are these ledge cliffs. So is it? Pardon? Isn't B the honeymoon trail? No. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it isn't. Oh, it well. Is. well and, and look at Rock Canyon. Rock Canyon is the canyon that the it, 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 yeah. expedition went up and tried to get across the hurricane cliffs and couldn't, and because you get ledged out right here. Is that, that looks like that it, B is, B is the, because we can tell. Is that the honeymoon trail right in there? Is no, it's, it's hard to tell at this scale, but. Right. No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah, right, right. Well, and then they went south. Yeah, and, they and it's, it's, this, this is kind of the landmark on, on this particular photo, and we'll, we'll tell you why in a minute. But uh, it's, it's, it's B right here, but we've got some more detail. Again, this is from the field trip. It shows water pockets in limestones. Uh, the brown soils are probably from the Moen Kopi, which stains both the water and, and somewhat stains the gray limestone. But here's, here's Rock Canyon, and you can see the ledge cliffs right here. So if you have a ledge cliff here, what do you think you're going to have when you get in the canyon? You're going to have a stair, a vertical barrier. You're going to have a ledge cliff. And this right here is a blow up. And we can't quite, quite see, make out the detail, but it's in a shadow area. And I think there's a ledge cliff barrier right here along, along this route. One other thing, looking at, at uh, gullies, where you see sand and gravel, you probably have fairly flat topography because you have deposition. So we see some down here. We can see a little sand and gravel here. This area is mostly shadow, but you won't see any sand and gravel in the vicinity of uh, ledge cliffs or vertical barriers. OK, 
Okay, let's get to the honeymoon trail. I, th I think it actually was an Indian trail before. We don't, do you see any barrier or ledge cliffs? It's, it's all jumbled up topography. So we don't have the ledge cliffs going through this area here. I, again, this is an enlargement of this area right here. I think to begin with, our Mio probably went, went along the canyon bottom. And then he started going side hill. You build roads on side hill so you have a balanced cut and fill. But I think our Mio probably went down the canyon initially in this area right here. Okay, we can see the dis displacement. See how it drops down, this ledge cliff drops down here, this ledge cliff drops down here. Now the geology map shows echelon faults, which are faults closely spaced together, which drop down. But my, my interpretation is this is an old landslide area. And you can see the jumbled up topography. And here's, here's the honeymoon trail right here as reconstructed as a road. Why are houses built on landslides? Because you can have flat topography with a view. And that's what gets most people in trouble. You, you, you want a view site, but what's the problem with a view site? It's steep topography. So you go, to, you go to the steep topography area and you find a flat area. <laughs> and what have you found? You probably found a landslide. So that's why we have a lot of landslide problems for view lots. The other thing, again, this is personal interpretation. Topography up, up here is, is kind of, looks like collapsed topography within limestones. So I, I think what happened in this area right here was they had some collapsed topography that channeled and concentrated the water. And after the fault, this water was, was channeled towards the face of the cliff. When you're studying landslides, the first thing you ask is where is the water? So probably 90% or more than 90% of all landslides is associated with water. So that's one, one possibility. But again, the ge geology map shows echelon faults explaining this displacement. So this area was number was B on your last yeah. map? Yeah. Uh-huh. And what we, what we can see right here, they constructed the road here, but can you see the trace? I don't know. If, can, you, can you see a trace right here? Yeah. That probably was the or original honeymoon trail before the road construction. Yeah, but that could have been Mormon built too. Well, it, it could have been anyone. Yeah. It could have been anyone. Yeah. All, all, all I'm saying is, is that the road location is not necessarily you the... On the hill there, above where, where you end of your arrow, you see the little line going there? I don't know, down, go along the line. Parallel to the road, along the bottom of the ditch. No up. See, right there, yeah. go up. And you see the line? There's another trail, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it well, looks to me, and when you're there, you can actually see. There's, there was another route that well, and this is the upper portion where I where remember I said I think they went down the canyon rather than followed the, yes. followed the constructed road location is right here, and you can see another trace right. Well, this is this. No, this this could be uh, stratigraphy. This could be it. It could be. It, 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 it could be also. Okay, I've overlaid a slope map on Google Earth. The green areas have side slopes less than 30 and 40 percent. The honeymoon trail is mostly located in the green areas. At one time, I could walk on side slopes less than 30 and 40 percent. So I figure if I could walk on it, mules could probably handle the side slope. However, I, I think the trail must, must have it existed to take that risk. What's, what's the problem with a side slope? Okay, if you're going down a canyon and, and, you, and you hit a vertical barrier, what do you do? You stop. What happens with a steep side slope if you have a problem? You slide down the hill. 
So there's a real hazard tri tra uh, traveling along the, the slope, side slope, is there's a major risk of, of falling downhill. And the red areas right here are over 60% slopes. And once you get to this steepness, friction isn't going to hold you up very much. That's about the angle of friction. So we can see right here the trail pretty much stays within the green area, which, which probably is reasonable for walking along a slope or walking side slope. Approximately correct, but this is the better interpretation right here. But this alignment got us in the vicinity of this. Again, this is probably plotting this line on a different, different scale. The vegetation indicates Fort Pierce Wash has permanent water. Stagnant water may stink. The travel distance from Limestone Canyon, the previous journal location, is, is about 10 miles. So from, from the top of the cliff to about this, this being a possible Journal stop is about 10 miles. I might just say there are those who will argue very strongly that the party went way north to Hurricane and came down off the cliff right. there, quote, to the stinking spring. But I don't believe that when you read the journal. Well, it was, yeah, and it was also permanent water, so yeah. stinking springs is, is there is, is, is the hot springs. Stone water holes at the top of Rock Canyon. When he found those, we knew it looked really good, and we knew it was a really good possibility for that campsite. So we went there, we drove there, and then we tried to drive on along the top of the Hurricane Cliffs to Laverkin to get to Stinking Water Spring, what we thought. And it didn't, it didn't look good. The topography was wrong. It was too cut up, it was too broken up. It just didn't look good to us. So we circled around and back, came back towards that uh, top of Rock Canyon and we started to see if we could find another route where they went over the cliffs. So we're looking and looking and looking. The very first, first spot you can get over the cliffs is Honeyman Trail. And we went, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Honeyman Trail. Yeah. And that's when I changed my thinking. So then I started thinking, well, where is the stinking water then if, the, if they're not going to Pot Tempe? And we stood at the top of the Honeyman Trail and we looked west to see if we could see water, and guess what we saw? Fort Pierce, green, all kinds of green stuff, yeah. and we went, perfect. And we drove down there, and there's standing water. And then I looked at the Spanish in the journal, because remember, our amigo is a Spaniard, and he had written it in Spanish, and in Spanish, so whoever it had translated it said stinking water. But if you look at the word, I forget the word that was used, but if you look at the word and you, you translate it in, from Spanish, it could mean fetid water, which is just standing water, too. And we went, that's it, it's Fort Pierce. So I, that's what I think, too. And I was really encouraged to hear that's what Steve thought, too. Yeah. I, there's, no, there's no question in my mind about that spot. The Honeymoon Trail, Fort Pierce Wash, and they went out Fort Pierce Wash, if you read it, you hit the Severo River, perfect map for distance. And, and it makes sense because, you, because of the flat slopes, you, you can hike down the slope that way, or down the cliff that way. And the Indians have been there a long time. So I'm sure they found that, found that lo location and created a trail. But quickly, let's cross the Beaver Dam Mountains. Two journal entries, two rivers, or journal entries include two rivers, two landscape descriptions. The rivers have been interpreted to be the Virgin and the Santa Clara. And these journal entries start December 20th at the Virgin and end December 25th at, at the Virgin again. 
This slide shows three alternative passages and we're gonna vote. We're gonna have a discussion and we're gonna vote. So what we wanna do is we wanna cross the Beaver Dam Mountains and we can follow the Virgin River or the Gorge. This is the historic trail alignment today. It's through what they call Bulldog Canyon or we could take old Highway 91 and go this way here. So we, we've, got, we've got three choices that can get us across the Beaver Dam Mountains. But the control points, again, is the Virgin River here and the Virgin River here. And you know the Santa Clara. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's look at the arguments for the Virgin River Gorge. It's logical if you get to the Virgin River, you want to continue to follow it. So you follow the water, so that's one logical argument. It was the first National Historic Trail alignment, though, so this was a legislated trail, which, which later got changed. In 1826, Jebediah Smith went this way, but he didn't like it. And maybe Armio heard about all the problems that Jebediah had. Well, Jebediah went back again in 1828, and he did not go down. He followed Old Highway 91. And, but the biggest, biggest, the most persuasive is December 20th, he was at the Virgin River. 25th, he was at it again. So obviously he didn't follow it. And this is the same argument as used on the, as the San Juan. Because when they say getting back to the same river three or four days later, he must have left the river and gone another way. And roughly, it's, it's seven miles per day travel. Bulldog Canyon, now this is the current National Historic Trail alignment. And it follows existing dirt roads. One, one question is, there is no apparent water for four days. There's four days of travel from the Virgin River to the Virgin River. And today, there are no springs identified along that location. He traveled seven miles per day. And another problem is, is there are three journal entries of landscape descriptions between the Virgin River and the Virgin River. And it's difficult to relate those to what you see along the, the current alignment. Old Highway 91, it's a popular historical travel way. It followed the water. So he followed the Santa Clara up to Utah Hill and then he cut across. But initially he did follow the water. There are three intermediate, the three intermediate journal entries could be related to the landscape. It requires some imagination. It's not that definitive, but it's not inconsistent. They traveled 11 miles per day. And any discussion before we vote? Any questions? Well, you said there's no water in the Bulldog Canyon, but that's not true. There is one, one spring along the route. Uh, I mean, you go, you go south through uh, Sun River and around the end of the plateau there. I don't know what the ridge is called. And then you go up, follow the Bulldog Canyon route. There is a spring along the way. Well, there's, I noticed there was a spring north of it, but I didn't. As, as far as the USGS database, it doesn't show any existing springs along the alignment. Just as you're starting out, there is one a little bit north of, north of it. Yeah, that, that's you're been talking about the actual historic route. Yes, it, right. It was used quite, quite a bit between ninth, well, up until the, the road was built over the Utah Hill. Yeah, it, it's a, it was a... There's a let me just give you one problem with Utah Hill. Of course, maybe it has nothing to do with our meal. It's the steepness. You have to climb. I don't know how many used to have to get stop and get water. Or you carried water with you when you went over to Utah Hill. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, well, I'm pretty old, but I can remember we didn't go over Utah Hill without water. That was something you just didn't do. Or you went over in the middle of the night so that you didn't boil over, and especially trying to go through in July. I mean, it's a tough climb coming out. Of course, he was going the other way, but he did come back. So, 
I, yeah, and that, to, you have to consider that. And most of the water was the Santa Clara River, so that's probably about 20 miles from, from Mesquite. So, that's right. So that's a, that's so a consideration. The Canyon is a little shorter, and it's not as steep. Because you go around the south end of the Utah, uh, of, uh, Utah Hill. Well, the mountains, yeah. 5,000. But again, I, I think you would have had to have an Indian trail for him, him to, to go that way. Because it, it, it's not logical just looking at the landscape from a distance to go that way. So I think for him to go that way, there had to be an Indian trail, and that, that was, was possible. So where was the origin, the east origin of Old Dog Canyon? Was that by like Sun River is today, or was it farther north? Where did the exit the Santa Clara and Virgin? Where was the last water on the east of Old Dog? I, I should have had a, I don't, I, I should. Uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, I don't have a. Yeah. You go off of it on IU or whatever the road is. Well, you got Stucky Springs up there too, right? Or Stucky Springs. Whatever. Well, I think think that's more in this area here. But what I saw was I saw springs in this area. Yeah. And, and that's that's right. And that's that's an existing. That's you know that's in the database. <laughs> But I didn't see any. Okay, but it's not on the traditional road. But there is a road that goes right by the spring. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, all I did was look at the alignment and look at the proximity of springs to this alignment. But what you get in Bulldog Canyon is you get a whole series of. This is the Indian talking stick. Whoever has has this <laughs> gets to talk. Gets to talk. Once yeah. Once you get into Bulldog Canyon here. You have a whole series of little canyons taking off to the east. And when he's going to talk about the next one, well, this is your last barrier, but uh, the very first exploration that I did on the ground here in 2008 with Mark Henderson, who was a retired BLM archaeologist for me, we knew one of the campsites that our men was at was Beaver Dam. We knew we had the location we could start looking at. And so we started here, and we pulled up here, and we, we started walking across this mesa. And we couldn't find it. We couldn't find anything. We walked and walked and walked and walked, and we got up to Bulldog Canyon, and we could see, finally, this little trail coming in, right into the mouth of Bulldog Canyon, and we went, maybe that's it. <coughs> and so <coughs> um, back here that you can't see, as you go from Beaver Dam and you go to the west, we were able to find what we think is the Old Spanish Trail, which is really cool. But it's the main route by then. Because what you yeah. have yeah. what you have is the southern route or the Armijo route, it was only used twice, remember? Just twice. But then after Armijo, later on the Old Spanish Trail route went north. It's the northern route that went up That's the yellow line. And it went so, up so, so, over Utah Hill and yeah. to Camp Springs, which was on the ship which was there. Yeah. So the Camp Springs was a major campsite. Yeah, it's near where that nine is on. Well, so well, no, actually, actually, the yellow line is 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 the actual, is the actual location of the old Spanish Trail. Oh, is that the legislated route? That's that's the legislated oh, route. Legislated yeah. Route. So. Using the best information, it kind of follows the highway. We know it's not accurate. It's approximate. Okay, so Camp Springs is going to be. Is that where the nine is? About right yeah. here on the Shibbutz yeah. Reservation. We know they get there on the main route. Yeah. And so we know that was the main route. Well, you know used. that from the journal? From our um, journal? I'm not journal? sure what the source is. Mark gets the one. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I'd we like to see that. We need to look at the starts again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, know, we know it's probably, a, probably <laughs> a major campsite on the main route. So not the first time. Pardon? So not the first time. It was not the Army Hall. But later, after our meeting. Oh, yeah. Those are the northern routes that Steve's yeah. going to talk about next yeah. week. And so what happened is we, when we found where, where they crossed the Virgin River, and how we found that, um, again, I think Bruce has covered it really well. We start with the known information, which is the journal. We knew they were at Beaver Dam, and we're going, okay, how did they go west? Where did they go? And, it's, and so we drove to the Virgin River, and we looked in, and we looked in, and we're not seeing it. So we went to the south side where we could see the all the little bluffs on the river. And Mark spotted what he thought was a trail coming down. We went, yes! And it was the only place that we could see 
near Littlefield and Beaver Dam, where they could come down to the river. So we drove to the north side where it was, and we went with that. And I've got a, I've got a slide of it in okay. my, my slide presentation. It's not for certain, but it's a really good probability that we found where the main trail of the Old Spanish route went down to the Virgin River and crossed on the other side. Later on, we found where they came out on two different routes. And that was archaeologically. We could see a trail on the ground. Okay, but we could not find the Armenian route where it crossed that mesa, and you should be able to find it. And that bugged us. Yeah. Is there a road down to Bulldog Canyon now? Yes. In fact, you can take Google Earth yeah, exactly. and, and, and say, how do I get from, from here to St. George? And it will take you along, yeah. along the dirt roads. Get back to that map. That you okay, we're, we're running into <laughs> your, into your really time. Fast, I'm going to waste my time. <laughs> when we get, <clears throat> so what happened is at the end of the summer, um, the National Park Service administers the Old Spanish Trail. And so I went to the, to the office and I said, do you guys have any money that I could fly a helicopter over the road and maybe see the trail? And Sarah Schlanger, who um, worked in that office at the end, said, I've got some extra money. It's right at the end of our fiscal year. I'll give it to you and you can use that helicopter. So we hired the fire helicopter at the end of the fire season. They put me in a helicopter and I got up and we flew. With the helicopter, I flew to where, oops, it's just, just the first one, yeah. I knew they were at Beaver Dam and where we found that crossing of the Virgin, which was right here. And once I saw it from the air, I identified it and I said, okay, now you fly me north. <laughs> and because of the highway construction, you can't see where it went. It's destroyed, it's all construction zone. But here where Mark and I had walked, I had him drive the highway and I could see it from the air. It's the coolest thing. Yeah. And what it does, is it comes up from the high school, it crosses to the east of the high school, and where the highway is, where's the highway at? That's the yellow one. Is the yellow the highway? Well, yeah, well right. it's, it's the old Spanish trail it uh, the lo location, it yeah. The it, there's one segment that's east of the highway and stays east of the highway, goes right into Bulldog Canyon. There's another segment that goes west and also comes into Bulldog Canyon. And I had the helicopter fly me up here to see if the trail continued. It does not. There's no trail on the ground north of Bulldog Canyon in this area. There's none. So that was my question too, is, is there also a trail here? There's not. And the cool thing was, was I was able to follow it once I had it. It goes into Bulldog Canyon, and then I lost it. And I don't know, on the Armijo route, I don't know which canyon they went up because there's a little dirt road in each of those canyons that goes up, so I couldn't see it from the air. But I had the helicopter take me around here, and I picked it up again up here and flew it all the way to Mountain Meadow. It was really cool to see it from the air. So, so but that was the main route. The so main route. So kind of that you look that byway that comes into 91 then. The byway. What's yeah, the, the byway. You see right above the sea in Bulldog Canyon. Right there. There's on. a byway? Yeah, and it hooks onto 91 around the back side of, uh, around the east side. Yeah, if, if you would. Yeah, here. 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 Road. It's a gravel road. Oh, is it a dirt road? Here. Yeah. 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 If you got, yeah. So if, if, if you wanted to go, go from, if you went to Google Earth and you had a point from here to here, what it would do, it would take you up this way. Right. Yeah. And, and, then, and then back that way there. But I think, again, it's, uh, Armijo, if he went this way, probably would have followed Bulldog. But let's uh, get, once you get ready for, uh, Mike, do you want to change the microphone? And just, we won't take time to vote, but. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the difference. Go to the next slide. A little, uh, how, give you some definitions so you can understand what we're talking about. Um, we've been talking with Bruce. I love how he looks at the topography. I love that, that's really cool. But um, archaeology, when we look at it archaeologically, we're actually looking at the study of human history and precinct history by studying the artifacts and sites left behind. So we're looking at the actual stuff. We're looking at an artifact. Is anything made or modified by man? Really simple. 
A site is any place used or modified by man. Go to the next slide there, Bruce. History is the study of human history through written records. You're just looking at the written history. That's all you're doing. Prehistory is simply before written records. Give you some definitions so you can understand it a little. So prehistory varies. If, uh, like when does prehistory end and when does history start depends on when the written record starts in that area. So 1776 is the very first time that we have any kind of written record in this area. So prehistory here ends at 1776 and history starts at 1776. Does that make sense? Okay, so when we look, go to the next one. When we look at um, a trail, we're, we're using a whole combination of information, whatever information we can get to find that trail, to locate it, to use it, have whatever we want to do with it. And Bruce is coming at it from an entirely different angle than I come at it from. My interest is to look at where is the trail actually on the ground and how can we prove it? It's true. And so that's what we did when I was talking about these different segments. Here, we're looking at the Utah-Arizona line. Here's four corners right here. So here's Utah, here's Colorado, here's New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada. The red route you can see is the main route of the Old Spanish Trail that was used the most. That's the northern route, okay, after Armijo. Armijo is the green one right here, What our best guess again of the Armijo route that was only used twice, okay? <clears throat> so to look at this, you can look at the written record. We've got the journal. We've got um, whatever other records that we can look at. We start there. And when we started here, we wanted, Mark Henderson and I wanted to find the trail on the ground because, and this was in 2008. In 2002, the trail was designated as a National Historic Trail using the best information available. Best guess, really, is what it was. Which is why the legislative route has it following the old highway as it comes, Highway 91, as it comes down here. That was the best guess at the time. Okay, so Mark and I wanted to pin it down. We knew, like I said, Beaver Dam, which is here in Arizona. And we did what I just told you we did. We started with the journal, the known camp locations, and we went on the ground to find trail traces. Go to the next one, Bruce. So we used the records. We actually walked the route. And what we're looking for is artifacts and sites from that time period, from 1828, 1829, 1830, right around in there. We're trying to look for Spanish stuff, not Indian stuff, looking for traces of mules, <laughs> horses as they go along. It's not a wagon road. It's a stock trail, essentially. We can use aerial photography. Um, to see if we can locate it. And like I did with a helicopter, we could, we could probably use Google Earth with a lot of it and make some pretty good guesses. Once we find what we think is the trail on the ground, which I think, I think we've got some points of it, then we can record it. And you're gonna have associated sites because these guys are camping. So you're gonna have campsites, right? Where they're camping. Their journal's gonna help us find those. We might find a campsite with some historic artifacts that might show us. There's been um, a Spanish helmet has been found in the Virgin River Gorge. I do know that. So some Spaniard was in the Virgin River Gorge. I don't believe it was associated with the old Spanish trail, but it might have been. Okay, but someone found that, just a member of the public, and we don't know exactly where they found it. That's the reason we encourage people not to move things, not to take them away is because something like that, that's a Spanish helmet, how often do you find a Spanish helmet? It would be really nice to know the location because maybe that would help us with finding where the old Spanish trail, but we have no idea where they found it in the Virgin River Gorge. Go to the next one, Bruce. <clears throat> okay, so what we do as archeologists is we, once we find a site on the ground, we try to determine, is it really important? Is it significant is what the term we use. If it is, we might list it on the National Register of Historic Places. It might get a national trail designation, which this trail already has, okay? It is a national historic trail. We know it's significant, because what we do is we say, does it add to local, regional, or national history or prehistory? Yeah, the old Spanish trail does. Local, regional, and national history. 
Is it unique? Yeah, it's pretty unique. So this is definitely significant. Go to the next one, Bruce. So this is the area that you're looking um, where Bulldog Canyon is. This is not specifically Bulldog Canyon. It's just a slot of the, uh, slide of the general area. Go to the next one, Bruce. And there's the trail. This is what we found. Here's the Virgin River. The gorge is right over here, Virgin River Gorge. So we're looking at the Virgin Mountains here. And we're standing on the north side, overlooking the river, and Littlefield is just right back here. So we're still in Arizona, we're not quite to Nevada. Mesquite is just around the corner. Our stock trail is right here, coming down the slope. And what happens when you have a historic trail, once you've disturbed the surface, you'll get erosion. And this is definitely a stock trail. And I'm guessing it's an old stock trail. We also found uh, over at, on the way to Beaver Dam, there's a sandy ridge just to the north of the freeway. And we found a cut in that sandy ridge. And I think that's where they went. And it later became a wagon road. This did not ever become a wagon road, this particular segment. The wagon road is a little bit further south here. And the first, um, there's, a, there's a wagon road that you've got. And then the first automobile highway that came through here, the Arrowhead Highway, is just right here up on this bluff. It's really cool. So we've got a whole bunch of travelways, historic and prehistoric probably. I believe this is, this is the main route of the Old Spanish Trail that we found. And then you could see where they crossed over on the other side. There's two different places that they went up to get on the south side that you can also see. So it was really cool to find that. And I think that's my last slide, I think. Let me see if I, what else I've got, Bruce. I might have it. Oh, so the question that we ask ourselves as um, archaeologists and as federal land managers is, what are we going to do with that trail? How are we going to manage it? And that determines on how significant is it. Under the National Trails Act, there's a strong provision for recreation associated with that trail, well, whatever trail is designated. So Congress encouraged recreation on these trails, and, and <clears throat> we try to protect and preserve the trail for the public, and we also try to provide recreation on and near the trail. And you, Steve will be able to talk to you about how you can use ways to drive the highway and see the same scenery that the Mexicans saw as they came through on horseback, or you might be able to hike the trail uh, or ride your horse along it, because what we do is we try and protect and preserve the trail. So where we know we have places they actually weren't on the ground, that's unique. That's significant. You don't find that every day. This is a 200-year-old trail. So we want to preserve it, so we educate the public so they don't destroy it like that inscription was destroyed. <laughs> we provide law enforcement, because it's against the law. People can be prosecuted. If we found out who Robin Cathy was from 1994, they could be cited under the Archaeological Resources Protection Act. We work with local communities and groups to try to preserve the trail, protect it, make people aware of it so they, they can enjoy it, know it's in their community. I don't think many people know that the Armijo route comes right through St. George. And I think it's cool. Anyway, that's well, what I got. Yeah. Talk a little bit about archaeological sensitivity. Oh, sensitivity. The balance, the balance the, between public enjoyment and protection. Yeah, um, and that's... When we look at how significant a site is, that determines how strongly we're going to protect it. So if it's on the National Register, then we will really try to protect it. And what we do is we have site stewards, volunteers, who actually go out and monitor and patrol. We try to catch people, destroying them if they are going to do it. Um, <clears throat> and so it's, it's a balancing act. Like Bruce said, it's definitely a balancing act. Because we want people to enjoy the prehistory and history, but we don't want them to destroy it. And so that the agency might do any number of things depending on what kind of site it is. They could put uh, some kind of protective cover on it like they've done on that inscription. Um, if you've gone to Indian Cave north of um, Kanab, it's a big cave filled with rock art. It's all fenced off. Keep people out because we don't want people destroying that rock art. Um, there's all kinds of ways that we, we try to protect them. 
But that's our, our main goal is to protect those sites so that people can enjoy them, so my grandkids can enjoy them. Is this pretty accurate? Yes, it is. They're good. Old Spanish Trail Association is one of the best groups I've ever worked with. They're fantastic. Is yeah. it cut down to the Virgin River on BLM land, or is that by the It's land? BLM. Oh, that's nice. Yes, <laughs> I know. And one of the best ways of protecting sites is we don't tell people where they are. <laughs> well, I that's, you're going to have a field trip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I guess the, the philosophical question, if a tree falls in the forest yeah. and no one hears yes. it, did it fall? <laughs> uh, I think that goes with artifacts too. If we can't see them, what importance are they? Mm -hmm. So in your research, did you find much physical evidence? Well, we haven't done much. That's the problem. We need to do more searching. We haven't found the campsites themselves. There's, there's more looking we can do. Definitely, and we rely heavily on volunteers. I'm retired, um, so I don't I don't get out there much anymore. But I'd like to I'd like to work uh, local Dixie Archaeological Society. I'm th I'm thinking about teaching um, an archaeological certification course again, and out of that we get some pretty good volunteers. So and we use them to do this kind of thing to walk and look for artifacts and look for sites. So. So, so you really think they went to the original Amigo site was through Bulldog Pass, in your opinion?